Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Resonant LLC Converter Power Stage Design, The Intuitive Approach. Let me start off with a basic resonant network. Here we have a source, resonant inductor, capacitor, and a load. This is the expression for the V out to V in ratio, V out to V in ratio, which is represented here in sort of a normalized way. This is the ratio and this is frequency or normalized frequency where the Q is defined as the resonant times LR over REC being a series resonant network or as Z over RC when RAC when Z is the square root of the inductor divided by the capacitor. Now a series resonant converter which is based on the series resonant network we have a normally a transformer then a rectifier a load and a, a filter capacitor and of course we have a drive in this case I'm showing a half bridge drive this is a non-linear circuit and it is rather difficult to get um, a relationship like V out to V in and therefore uh, it is customary and it's very convenient to sort of represent this network as a serious resonant network that we can analyze by phaser analysis. That is, we don't have to do time domain analysis as we have to do here because we cannot linearize this circuit being a highly nonlinear circuit. Now the way to do this actually has two parts to it. First of all, we want to replace the square wave here by a sinusoidal waveform. Uh, this is the half bridge, this is the full bridge. And the idea is that this resonant network is actually a filter. So when you feed in a square wave, uh, you mainly see the first harmonic. Say this is the switching frequency, this is the switching frequency of this square wave. And so you are actually feeding here the square wave and the current will be pretty much like a sinusoidal current depending of course on the Q, uh, for a very low Q it will not be the case, but usually you run uh, these converter at fairly high Q, not too high though, and uh, therefore uh, you'll see the first harmonics, the major harmonics, but then the higher harmonics, this is like the breakdown, uh, general representation of the breakdown of the harmonics of the square wave, like the third, fifth, etc., would be pretty far away, so you are gonna, not going to see it. So the first step would be to replace the square wave that we have here by the first component, the first harmonics. Now as it turns out, uh, by Fourier analysis, the relationship between the peak of the first harmonics to the height of the maximum value of the square wave is 4 over pi. So this is the first step. This is for a full bridge and if you have a half bridge you have only half the value so we have to divide it by 2. So this takes care of this sinusoidal waveform that now we can replace the square wave by this source and this would be the relationship between the square wave and the sinusoidal source. Now what about the resistor? It was shown by Professor Steigerwald that uh, one way to do it is really to equate power dissipation. That is, if we have a nonlinear circuit like this, this would be like the resonant converter. We assume that there is a sinusoidal current here coming from the converter for the reason I've already said. This is rectified. We got this rectified current and the average of this rectified current goes into the load. Now equating the power means that if I have this equivalent circuit, I'd like the power dissipated by this linear resistor now, the equivalent RAC resistor, this power to be equal to the power dissipated by this DC resistor. So we have the relationship between the DC current here and the peak value of the sinusoidal current at the input. And since power is I square over RL, this is for the DC here. And the same thing goes for 
the AC, and we have already the relationship between the AC and DC, uh, it comes out that the RAC is 8 over pi square Rn. It's about 0.8. That is, you can replace this whole thing by a linear representation, RAC being 8 over pi square this resistor. Now, there is also, of course, a relationship between the voltage that you'll find here, the DC voltage, and the voltage that you'll find here. And here is the relationship. Again, I'm doing it by equating the power. The power here is V square of DC over RL. The power here is V AC over square over RAC. And by equating these two, we get the res this relationship that the voltage, the AC voltage, this would be RMS voltage, here is related to the DC voltage here by about uh, 0.9. Now, in many cases, we would have a transformer, so we have to reflect the AC calculated, say, secondary to the primary, and of course the reflection is done by multiplying it by n square n being the ratio between primary and secondary. So by this we can now modify the RAC to be to take into account the transformer and therefore we can have now a AC equivalent linear circuit that can be analyzed by a phasor analysis and in SPICE, or P-SPICE or LT-SPICE or any other circuit simulator it can be run by AC analysis. This cannot be run by AC analysis because AC analysis is proper for linear circuits and this is a non-linear circuit. So now let's go back to the converter itself. This is again a series resonant converter and one thing we have to worry about is the gain we can get. And the reason we need the gain is that normally we like to have a constant output and therefore if the input is changing then the ratio between input and output has to be controlled. And this is of course done by the feedback such that when the voltage is deviating from the required value, uh, it will change the switching uh, frequency in this case so as to bring it back. So the first thing we have to worry about is the gain that we can get. And let's say that we need the gain between 0.4 and 0.6, uh, just arbitrarily as an example. This would mean that for the plots that I've shown here, uh, you need, uh, if you like to go from Q1 to uh, about Q5, then you'd need this span of frequency, which is very high. So this is the reason why the series resonant converter is not very popular as a voltage regulator. That is when you have to regulate the voltage. It's very good, by, by the way, for current uh, sourcing, but this is beyond the subject that I'm discussing here. Another way to do it is to use a multi-resonant converter, which is, for example, the LLC. LLC means that you have two inductors rather than one and a capacitor. The idea here is as follows. You have now two inductors. This is again the RAC. The, the um, equivalent circuit is done exactly the same way I've shown before. And um, in this case, we have two inductors. If RAC here is smaller, much smaller than the impedance of this LM at the operating point or near the resonant you might say, then the impedance of L sub M doesn't play any role and you have actually a serious resonant converter and this would be the resonant frequency and the Q for this circuit you can define it as the omega R, this uh, omega R by these two elements and RAC. However, if RAC is much larger than omega LM, then LM of course will play a role here, and if LM is larger than LR, uh, you can sort of neglect first approximation LR, and you see that you have now a parallel circuit here, parallel resonant circuit here, the frequency again will be 1 over 2 pi, now LM CR, and of course the, this frequency turns out to be at a lower frequency than the frequency we have seen before. 
So the idea here is shown here as follows. We have the one resonant, this is the parallel resonant, and then we have a series resonant. So this sort of expands the gain. So we are adding gain here even when the gain for the parallel resonant is going down or for the serious resonance we are adding gain when this gain is going down. So by this we are sort of flattening out the response and indeed if you look now at the response of the LLC resonant network, here it is, this is the L sub R, C sub R and L sub M, uh, you see that you got a fairly nice behavior here. It's not going down to ground as, as before, to zero level, or the very low level as before. It sort of flattens out. There's also a very interesting point here that all the Q, uh, the gain is about constant. So this is, by the way, a plot for a normalized circuit. That is, this, the frequency is one hertz. And also Z is 1, that is the characteristic impedance 1 for Q equal to 1. So for C sub R, which is 1 over 2 pi, which is about 0.16, and same thing for L sub R, you get a frequency of 1, resonant frequency of 1. I am here using a ratio between LR and LM of 6. Okay, LM is larger than LR for signal, I'll talk about it in a second. Aside from the fact that we are getting a flattened response here, we also see here that very interesting that in this region, let me go over here, in this region uh, we have a phase lag. This would mean that this circuit uh, would have a zero voltage switching for uh, the switches when operated as a converter, either a half bridge or full bridge, because then the current is lagging, so you have the diode conducting and therefore this is a very nice area to work in. So we see from this normalized network that we get fairly nice gain behavior and we get also phase lag, so we have zero voltage switching and this is why the LLC is becoming uh, very popular today. Now the question is what about the ratio of LM to LR? And I'm here showing different ratios. So the same curves as before, except this is for six, three and 12, so much different ratios. And if I zoom on it, I see that in the case of say three, we get very high gain. Let me go back here, you get very high gains. High gains, high Qs means that the reactive energy in the capacitor and inductor is going to be large. High Q means high reactive energy, which means that these elements will be fairly uh, large size. On the other hand, if the ratio is very large, then you see that we don't get much gain. And uh, of course, then we'll have to go to very uh, low frequencies in order, I mean, relatively low frequencies compared to this uh, resonant frequency in order to get uh, the gain that we might need. So it turns out that around 6 LM to LR, it's kind of an optimum ratio. And this is why many, many designs are based on this uh, range, it'll be like between say 5 and 7, uh, will be the favorable range for this ratio. So let's have a look, a closer look now at this response. What we see here again, this is frequency, this is gain, these are Q values which correspond of course to resistances. The way it is defined, let me go back for a second, for historical reasons, the Q of this circuit has been defined as omega r, which is the resonant, the series resonance over RAC, okay? So this is the way Q is defined normally. You can also, of course, define the Q on the basis of the parallel resonance, which will be a different story. When defined this way, you find that Q1 is like this curve, while as Q is going down, you have a higher and higher response, and this is kind of strange because here, in fact, you have a parallel resonance and we have defined Q as a function of the series resonance. So this is why this odd behavior that we have a small Q and high. 
So how can we approach the design? Normally we'll be given the input voltage, minimum and maximum, this is the DC, output voltage required for the, at the converter, it's a stabilized output voltage, maximum power, switching frequency, and then the topology where it's a full or half bridge configuration. I'm going to show how we are going to get the power element, the resonant inductors, the resonant capacitor, and the turns ratio of the transformer. Now the design is based on the equivalent circuit, the linear equivalent circuit, and uh, I'm now labeling the input as V in, this is DC input, V DC, DC output of the actual converter, V AC is the AC input to the equivalent circuit, this is now RMS, and V out is the RMS value across the RAC, which represent the load. The first step, of course, will be to choose the ratio of L sub M over L sub R, uh, that's the K, as I discussed earlier. Next, we consider the issue of gains. We need to set up the maximum gain and the minimum gain. Now the maximum and minimum gain depending on the input voltage, minimum input voltage and maximum input voltage. Gains times V in is the V out. Now we need to sort of keep the output voltage at the nominal value. So therefore, when I divide uh, A max times V in min and A minimum times V in max, and then dividing this two, I get that the ratio of the gain in, in, is inversely proportional to the input voltages, the minimum over maximum. Now, since the AC is related to the DC by a constant, then therefore this ratio also corresponds to the AC component, that is the minimum AC input and the maximum AC input. So knowing these, this ratio, I can set up the boundaries so as to get the gains that I need. This actually sets two points, there's an intersection here and there's an intersection here. This will be the Q maximum, I'll talk about it in a minute, and this will be the lowest frequency. This is the span, here we have the span of the frequency, I'm working on a normalized plot, so this is one hertz, this is the maximum frequency and the minimum frequency. Now I can translate these frequencies to the actual frequencies in the system by either deciding on the resonant frequency and then the actual, say, minimum frequency will be this resonant frequency times this value here, the normalized value. Or if I decide about this value, if I'm setting this value, then I can get from here, of course, the resonant frequency. So this is a translation of the normalized frequency to the actual frequency. Now I'm going back to the intersection with this Q curve. This is Q max corresponding to the RAC minimum or the uh, P maximum. These Qs, which are higher and um, the resistor are lower, cannot be accommodated because we have a fold over here and as we change the frequency, then uh, we don't have a monotonic change. So this is very dangerous, so we don't work here. We just work on a curve like this. Now the concept here that I can get the actual RAC, RAC in the system, in the converter I'm designing, because I know the AC, I know the gain, and I know the power. I'm working at this point. This, the calculation is done for this point. So we have V out. V out is A max VAC minimum. This is the relationship of the gain. Now we have this VAC related to V in minimum DC. This is V in DC by 4 over pi and 1 over the square root of 2 is to convert it to RMS. P max is V out squared. This is the actual power here. V out squared over RAC minimum. This power corresponds to this power. This is how we have found RAC. V out over P max. And therefore, from these three, 
I can get, uh, I can solve for our AC minimum to be this expression, which is a function of the V in minimum and P maximum and the maximum gain that I've uh, determined. So this brings me the value of this RAC minimum. Once I have it, everything is sort of simple because Q max is omega LR ton divided by RAC. Now I know this one, I know the frequency one way or the other, the way I discussed earlier, then I can get L sub R and from the resonant frequency expression I can get the C sub R and from K I get LM. So this actually uh, sets up the values of the network, the resonant network of the system. Now we can get N square from the relationship between RAC and RDC. RDC can be calculated from the power, output power and output voltage that is required. And once I know RDC, I plugged it in and then I can extract N, N as a square root of this expression. So this actually ends up the design. Let me just wrap it up again. We start with setting the boundaries of the gain. We get the value of Q max. We calculate RAC from the gain and the power that is required and the VAC minimum or V in minimum. We get the expression for RAC. From RAC then we can get the L sub R through Q, C sub R from resonant, and of course LM from the K. And finally, N square is obtained from this relationship. RDC is obtained from the power at the output, and therefore we got N as this expression. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting, and perhaps it'll be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.